Greetings, this is Joel Duff. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to take a closer look at the concept of a mature creation, or the idea that the earth was created with the appearance of age. This notion, at first glance, allows for the reconciliation of modern geological findings with a belief in the recent physical origin of the earth, as held by young earth creationists. But does it deliver a simple solution to reconciling observations of the physical world and a common interpretation of scriptures? Coming up, let's explore what it means to be created with the appearance of age, who this argument appeals to, and why it is rarely used by Christian apologists today. Strike up a conversation about the age of the earth with nearly any group of evangelicals and you're sure to get a lively discussion. There may be a young earth defender who will pull out some sort of Ken Ham, 10 top proofs of a young creation. Some will claim to be agnostic on the topic, while others will say they accept the evidence that the earth is very old. Many evangelical pastors recognize that the evidence for an old earth is quite strong, and yet there is a real fear of how the acceptance of an old earth might push them into uncomfortable territory regarding other origins questions. The result is that many pastors assiduously avoid the topic. However, when prodded for their opinion, they often might reach out for what appears to be a get-out-of-free-jail card, but in the end, I would argue, satisfies no one. I'm talking about the appeal to mature creation or creation with the appearance of age. At first glance, the appearance of age argument might seem to permit a person to recognize most of the findings of modern geology and yet still believe that the physical origin of the earth was very recent. This argument then singularly eliminates the need for the many contrived theories of flood geology to, to explain all the geological features of the earth in the context of their origins in less than just 10,000 years, or according to some, just 6,000 years. It's a seductive explanation. After all, who could deny that anything created from nothing or molded supernaturally into the present form would necessarily have an apparent history that didn't reflect its true history? No physical object could be created supernaturally without the appearance of having a past. For example, the question of Adam and Eve being created as adults. If they were, of course they would have to appear as if they had had a childhood and had parents. Presumably, if we peeked into their genetic code, it would reveal some further evidence of this apparent history, such as the variation of genes that appear to have been inherited. Or would they? Consider if Eve were literally constructed from the flesh of Adam, would she not be a genetic clone of Adam? It would seem so, but as a female, we would expect that part of her difference from Adam would have to be the result of some real physical chemical difference in addition to a different set of sex chromosomes. As such, we would have to conclude that even the genetic material of Adam would have to have been re-sculpted or created new by God to enable female physiology, including the ability to carry offspring. Undoubtedly, then, the investigation of Adam and Eve would strongly suggest Eve had a history separate from Adam, and thus, for any strictly literal reading of Genesis, Adam and Eve would have to have been created with an apparent history. An appeal to the parents of age, though, is most often made to avoid the ramifications of evidence of an old earth or solar or stellar evolution. For example, the moon appears as if it has a long history of being bombarded by asteroids and meteorites and thus undergone a long and difficult history. But an appeal to a creation with apparent age, the creation appearance speaks not to the history of bombardment, but only to an apparent history of bombardment. The solar system is full of examples of physical features that appear ancient. Look at the image of Mars above, which was taken by the Curiosity rover, which has been roaming around the floor of the large crater of Mars since 2012. The boulders you see in the foreground could be interpreted as having been sort of tossed out onto the surface from a meteorite impact just seen off to the right. These rocks, in turn, are sitting on what is many layers of sedimentary rock that appear to have been produced under diverse conditions over long periods of time. All of these rocks, all of these layers, are found in the floor of a nearly 100-mile crater called Gale Crater. Simple logic requires that this huge crater must have formed before the events that formed all the sedimentary rock layers that are inside the crater. The small crater and the boulders lying on top of these other rocks come even later. 
The rocks in this picture, they tell a story. It's a story of specific historical events that did not occur simultaneously. Did all these events happen in just the past 6,000 years? There's no remote plausible scenario that can compress all of this history into such a short time frame. So what is the origin of this scene on Mars? The choice is rather clear. Either Mars is exceedingly old in real years, or it was created with the appearance of a series of historical events that occurred over many years to sculpt the present features of Mars. The obvious and usually intuitive nature of the evidence that points toward an immense age of the Earth or other members of our solar system has tempted many Christians who are convinced of the young age of the universe to appeal to creation with apparent age. But if apparent age is a feature of an object's creation, how should or can we evaluate where apparent age ends and where the real history begins? For example, take a look at this image. Astrogeologists suggest that over the last 10,000 years, the condition on Mars has changed very little from what it's observed today. If this is the case, if we run the clock back 6,000 years to where young Earth creationists placed the origin of Mars, what you're seeing right here in this image may be almost exactly what God created the day the planet came into existence, except for an inch or two of dust and maybe a very tiny bit of erosion. All the layers you see in this rock didn't come from sediments laid down in some past real history, but must simply be the appearance of a past history of layered rocks or layered sediments that became rock. Now, some climate change may have occurred and there may have been some meteorite impacts over the past 6,000 years that have happened near on Mars. But is it possible that this 100 mile crater and the layers of rock deposited in it are all just part of a created apparent history? But then maybe somehow the small crater just off to the right in that first picture was real? Like the, not, the rocks that are laying on the surface represent actual real historical events. They were really tossed out of a pit from this impact. In the end, everyone appealing to the creation of Mars with apparent age will have to say that the dividing line between apparent history and real history cannot be determined because the data collected from both real and apparent histories are both consistent with there being real historical events. It's this inability to divide reality from illusion that has been one of the main reasons that many Christians, including young earth creationists, to reject creation with the appearance of age as a sort of a go-to argument to explain the physical features of the universe. I want this, to let this point sink in for a moment. And to do that, I want to show you a couple more pictures of Mars. And here what we have on our screen here is a, a picture taken on the surface of Mars, I believe by the Curiosity rover, again, in this large crater. Um, and then another image from Earth, right, with similar looking sedimentary features. And on Earth, any young Earth creationist is going to claim that these layers of rock represent real sediments that were laid down sometime in the past by some other events, maybe a global flood or something like that. But nonetheless, this is not the way that God created the Earth. He didn't create it with these particular layers in them. And young Earth creationists would say they know that because there are fossils inside of these layers. But then we take a look at this image on Mars and boy, those layers of rock look curiously similar you know, on the surface of Mars, right? Many, many, many sedimentary, what appear to be sedimentary rock layers, right? That then have been eroded. So erosion itself is a process that takes time and represents or seems to signify the passing of time. Here's some more layers of, of rocks on Mars. You can see many, many thin layers of, of sediment that are being eroded out. And what's, what's eroding this? There's no water on the surface of Mars. This is all erosion by wind and some very small particles in the air that are abrasive and then therefore carving away at the rocks on the sides of these hills. Here's another example. What I like about this particular one is we see a, a, a number of different layers of rock, all right? Um, and this appears to be what we would say if we saw this on Earth, a fossilized sand dune right? A sand dune that has uh, lithified, right? Become rock. And here we have 
rocks on Mars that show this stratification that looks just like a sand dune where you have the, the sand dune having formed one way and then the winds changing direction at a different time and the layers are laid down on top of that. There's erosion and new layers put on top and so forth. And you get these sort of uh, angled uh, deposits. We see that on Mars and interpret that looking at the rocks here on Earth as sand dune deposits that have then lithified and become rock. And I want to remind you, these particular rocks that you're looking at here are preserved inside the basin of a massive crater. And so if the crater itself is a possible evidence of an ancient Mars, right, an event that happened, and then inside that crater, then you had further historical events to result in this particular image. Um, contrast that with, you know, as I was saying, a sand dune. Here we have fossilized sand dunes uh, from Page, Utah. I took this picture uh, a couple of years ago. And here we have these many, many layers of sedimentary rock uh, from past sand dunes that have been that have solidified. Again, more rocks on Mars showing a diversity of different types of rock. So all these image, images are portraying the, the sense of a lot of history has gone on in order to result in the image that, or the situation or the, the actual condition that Mars is in at this time. Here you see in the forefront some more of these basalt rocks. And in the, in, the, in the background there, you see uh, stratified layers of rock, which represent probably some kind of sedimentary material. This is a very large, uh, you know, 10,000 foot tall mountain that is situated in the center of the crater. Um, here we are uh, up on where we're climbing up the side of that mountain and looking across the basin. And these mountain, that mountain range off in the distance is actually the rim of this massive crater that's some 100 kilometers wide. Now, this is actually, uh, these are actually pictures from the surface of Mars taken by the uh, Opportunity rover uh, a few years earlier. So on a different location on Mars, actually, this is on a large plane that's thought to have been covered by a shallow sea at some point. Uh, and in this area, we have a, a crater. And again, a crater appears to represent an impact, something that has struck the land, uh, causing material to be thrown out off to the sides. But you see here, this particular crater, the Santa Maria crater, which is about 295 feet in diameter, um, appears to be severely eroded. There aren't large blocks of material, large blocks of rock hanging around the side they appear to all have been worn down. So with wind in this area blowing sand across the surface, that eventually has worn down the rocks around the edges. Um, there's still a rise around the edge, and you can see it in this image straight down from a satellite. Uh, you're peering down on this particular crater, and that lighter layer of rock would represent the edge of this crater where its rock is exposed versus the sand around it, uh, giving it uh, a different reflective uh, pattern. But, and then there's sort of these sand dunes in the middle. This looks like an old crater. This doesn't look like something that happened yesterday. Whereas in my first picture, there's like literally, you know, English rocks, English rocks. How about that for a term? Rocks with many angles, meaning they're not, they haven't been eroded yet, right? It looks like an impact happened more recently and spread debris out onto the surface of the land. Here's Victoria Crater which is a few kilometers away from that other crater I showed you. This one's 2,600 feet in diameter, so much, much larger. Uh, and again, it looks like a severely eroded crater. Um, here it is uh, in, in person, uh, which Opportunity Rubber has, has pulled up to it and taken a picture. Uh, and again, the edges are very, very worn and smoothed off. All right, again, simply by wind erosion. And the surface of Mars, you know, it has wind, but it also has a much lower amount of gravity and the air is very thin. And as a result, the air can't hold a lot of material in it, right? Right, small, very, very small dust particles. And so these dust particles are blowing past, creating this erosion on these rocks, which is gonna occur at a much slower pace than it does on Earth. And erosion by wind abrasion is a very slow process here on Earth. So the amount of time necessary to erode this particular, um, this particular um, 
So the amount of time required to erode this particular crater down to the point where we're seeing it today could really be millions of years. But let's pull ourselves out a little bit. So what I just showed you was um, Santa Maria, which is a, a tiny crater here, which you, along here, which you can't see. Uh, it's so small. And then you have Victoria Crater, which I just showed you, which is 2,600 feet uh, in diameter. Uh, and this is the path uh, that this little rover took. Uh, and it's going um, multiple kilometers. And eventually it's making its way to this massive crater over here. All right, some 50 kilometers in diameter, the Endeavor uh, crater, crater. And then it climbed up on the edge of it. And this is essentially a mountain range around the side. But you can see that this whole thing is is filled in, almost looks like the plain. Um, and then there are other craters out here too that just look like little dimples, right? So Victoria Crater is actually a very young looking crater, right? It has the appearance of being fairly young and yet still incredibly ancient. These other craters have the appearance of being far, far older uh, than the Victoria Crater. And the Endeavor Crater itself, imagine an impact that created this kind of crater and the amount of material it must have thrown out into the land around it and the jumble of stuff. And yet this whole area is smoothed off after millions of years of erosion, leaving only the hint of the, of the uh, rim of this crater, which is hundreds of feet high, right? There's a series of mountains, but they're very rounded off. So the point is, is that as you look at images of Mars and you think about um, the origin of these features. This certainly has the appearance of a set of or a series of historical events in order to get to the point where the surface has this appearance, this this look. So you could do the same thing with the uh, with the moon, but it's not as interesting because on Mars you actually have layered rocks. All of this is a bunch of layered rock. I didn't show you, but in Victoria Crater, you, there's actually layers of rock. So that impact that cause the crater in the walls of the crater, you can see that there's layered rock, meaning that that suggested at an earlier time, there was possibly this shallow sea on Mars that then laid down these layers of sediments that then had to turn to rock, which then got impacted, spread out, and then all eroded after that. So Mars certainly appears to be old. And the temptation would be to say, the temptation that, that many Christians have is to simply say, well, something looks old um, and it can't be explained as, as all these events having occurred in the last 6,000 years. Just say that God created them that way. He created all these particular craters with the appearance that they have today. And I was just saying before, you walk up to it, how much erosion has occurred over the last 6,000 years in this particular location? really virtually nothing. I mean, we take a satellite image of this particular location on Mars, unless there's been a recent meteorite impact, which would be very clear, and because we see them on Mars, they look like very striking, very visible black marks on the surface with material strewn out across the surface. Um, and so we know that there have been recent impacts, um, but everything else, would have been created exactly the way it looks by God at the beginning, according to the apparent age hypothesis. All right, so Ken Ham of Young Earth Apologetics Ministry Answers in Genesis, he actually disagrees with this stark choice that I presented at the beginning. He doesn't agree that anything looks old, but rather he would say, and I quote, we have simply been indoctrinated to believe that it looks old. Furthermore, by saying the universe looks old, you are trusting the dating methods can give us an apparent old age for the universe, but they can't because the universe actually isn't old. Now, I just read you Ken Ham's response to a comment that he often gets, a comment that he gets at conferences. People come up to him, as he says, and they come up to him, and this is what people say. They say, when I'm talking to someone who believes in old earth, one of the things I say to them as a young earth creationist is that God didn't make Adam and baby. He made them as an adult. And when he created the universe, he created it fully functional with the appearance of age, even though it wasn't old. So Ken Ham is saying, this is what people say to me. This is what they say is their response. 
So what's his response? As I read to you a moment ago, my response often shocks these speakers. By saying the universe looks old, you are trusting that the dating methods can give us an apparent old age for the universe, but they can't. Let me explain. When people say the universe has apparent age, usually they're assuming, for whatever reason, the universe looks old. I have found that unconsciously such people have already accepted that the fallible dating methods of scientists can give great ages for a young Earth. So Ken Ham is trying to argue that, in fact, when you look at Mars, you only believe it looks old because of your indoctrination. That you, uh, you think that it looks old, but in fact it doesn't look old. It actually is young because it is young. And if you just interpreted the evidence the correct way, you would come to the conclusion that those craters are evidence of a young Mars, not an ancient Mars. He and other young Earth creationists believe that the evidence either exists already or will be found in the future to show that the features of the Earth, and probably even Mars, can be explained as the result of events that have occurred within the last 6,000 years. Now, he doesn't deny that the original creation must have had some kind of maturity, and he'll use that word, that in the Garden of Eden there was mature age. But honestly, he and his team of young Earth, young age apologists, They've been at a loss to provide a functional definition of how that created maturity is fundamentally different from a creation with the appearance of history of specific events. Look, Ken Ham has good reason to distance himself and young earth creationists in general from appealing to creation with apparent age. First, for young earth creationists, God would seem particularly deceptive if he had created much of the world we see with the appearance of being very old. Very simply, young earth creationists believe almost universally that the scriptures require that the death of animals was the result of Adam's sin. So they view the original creation as deathless, at least for breathing and blood-bearing animals, and thus very unlike our present world. As a result, Ken Ham reasons that any evidence of death in the world must be the result of activity after Adam's creation and fall. Furthermore, since Adam was created on the sixth day and he sinned shortly thereafter, proponents of his view feel compelled to attribute any geological features containing fossils to some period after the creation week. They couldn't be created with the appearance of age because that would be with the that would be like creating with the appearance of death. They argue that fossils, being remnants of once living things, could not have been part of God's original creation. Given that most of today's mountains contain fossils, it's argued that God could not have created the mountains or practically any other geological formation we observe today during the original creation week. To them, suggesting the world appeared aged at creation is tantamount to admitting that God envisioned a world with cycles of death before its physical creation. And that contradicts their belief about the world and the way the world was before sin. A second reason why young earth creationists avoid the idea of creation with apparent age relates to their interpretation of biblical text. This group interprets Genesis 1 to support a young earth and similarly views the Noahic flood as a global worldwide event. This interpretation is significant because a global flood would logically lead to the widespread changes on earth. If the earth were created to look as it does today, then the expected transformation effects of such a flood would be absent, contradicting the young earth expectation of significant global changes resulting from the flood. Therefore, young earth creationists see little reason to attribute the earth's current geological features to some moment of creation, anticipating instead that these features were shaped by the flood. Hence, they don't look at the Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls or great mountains as something that God created, at least created in the beginning, right? They aren't evidence of an apparent age, an apparent history. They actually have a history because it was the flood that created them. But then when you turn to Mars, which is why I showed pictures of Mars. Does that particular explanation apply to Mars? Well, if you go to the Creation Museum or the Ark Encounter, Ken Ham's Creations, you'll find signage there that suggests that Mars also had a flood at the time of our flood here on Earth, the Noahic flood. And that might account for the different layers of rocks there and the erosion and the evidence that there were once seas on Mars. In other words, they're accepting the interpretation that the layers of rocks on Mars are evidence of past histories. 
and they don't want to claim that past history is a created history to look like it has history, a parent age. They wish it to actually have been the history of Mars. And therefore, they do attempt to force all the apparent history of Mars into a real 6,000 year history. And then wish to claim the Mars looks young because everything that happened there happened there within a 6,000 year time frame. Now, I want to back up and use the Hawaiian Islands as an example of why apparent age fails in its simplest sense, the way that many who wish to appeal to it, they want to explain why things look old, like the Hawaiian Islands look old. And so they wish to appeal to apparent age. Why doesn't Ken Ham and other younger creationists buy that explanation? The Hawaiian Islands are a chain of volcanic islands. They seem to be of varying ages, a conclusion which is supported by a number of pieces of data. Now, when I say they're volcanic, I don't think I need to spend a lot of time convincing you that all of these different islands that you're seeing here uh, are volcanoes. Like all the sediment, all the rock that's found on these islands. The entire island is made up of volcanic material. So it appears that the islands are created or formed by volcanic activity. And they appear to be different ages. That's hard to see in this particular picture, but the main Isle of Hawaii down here and on this end of the island, that is where it's active. That's where the newest volcano, you know, the, the active volcanoes are. And if you go to the other end of the island, there is evidence of volcanic cones, but they don't seem to have been active in the recent past, right? They're covered by forest and they're eroded. And then when you go to other islands, of course, there's a long chain of smaller islands and atolls out here, but this last large island is, is hills and forest and looks in, in, in incredibly eroded. There's no like dramatic volcanic landscape there. And so it appears to have been a volcano longer ago and have eroded more than the other islands. Faced with the overwhelming evidence that the Hawaiian Islands have an ancient origin. Because volcanoes take a while to produce all this matter, all right? And then it's going to take a while to erode all this material, right? Many Christians want to claim, they want to take this easy get out of jail free card explanation, and they want to say that the Hawaiian Islands were created on the second day of creation right? When the seas were separated from the land. This goes way beyond merely just looking mature. It reflects the culmination of a series of historical events, right? In other words, God would have to have created these islands with the appearance of a whole series of separate events speaking to their origins and how they originated. And yet, couldn't have originated that way in such a short period of time, and thus therefore were made to look like they had gone through those events. By acknowledging that these features were designed to look ancient, one might concede that the radiometric dating and other evidence supporting the island's antiquity are actually accurate. They're, in, they're accurate interpretations of the facts. However, this suggests that, the, that studying these islands is essentially examining an artificial history, not a real history. This presents a fascinating yet challenging notion. When visiting the high active volcano on Hawaii, you might walk on previous lava flows, ones that we know from historical records. Like I know that I'm walking on lava that was laid out in 1852. But as you walk off of that flow onto another flow, it's possible that that particular lava flow was actually created by God to look as it is today with a small amount of erosion that's occurred since. So one lava flow is real and produced by actual molten lava flowing out on the land, whereas another lava flow was created as it is, even though it looks like it flowed out of a volcano. And then you might do some studies on that. You might find out the chemical ratios and maybe plant trap, maybe there's little plants that are trapped in there, like there's remains of plants in the lava. All of those would suggest real histories. This lava flow has a certain chemical ratio that matches this particular volcano versus this lava flow over here matches a different volcano. And yet 
they don't actually, they, the little volcanoes never actually produce that particular flow. How are you going to perceive real history when all the individual data points point you to thinking that real things have happened in time and in a particular order? What you're looking at in this image are the radiometric dates, uh, consensus dates for the ages of the Hawaiian Islands. So I said before, the islands look old. In fact, uh, the first people who uh, settled the Hawaiian Islands had a number of different ideas about the islands and their own myths about the origins of them. And those included the, the an actual accounting of the different ages of the islands in which they saw Kauai, all right? Oh, I think I said Maui before when I was referring to the farthest islands, right? That's Kauai. Um, they saw that as being an older island, even though they knew nothing about radiometric dating or geology or like you know, the types of things that we know about geology today, right? But they visualized that island as being much, much older than the active island of Hawaii. Um, and you can see here, as you look at the islands, you see like the, 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 the east coast of Hawaii is very, very young, whereas the west coast of the main island of Hawaii is much, much older the order of hundreds of thousands of years. And then when you go to Maui, it's a million years old. And Oahu is two to three million years old. And then Kauai is five million years old. And so the radiometric dates match up with our gut reaction to just visualizing the islands themselves and the amount of erosion they appear to have experienced. At this point, advocates of mature creation think they have found a way to accept the findings of science, right? They'll say like, I can accept these radiometric dates, right? God just simply made the ratios the way they are to make the islands look like they're old, to match my gut feeling about the amount of erosion I'm visualizing, the feeling like it looks like it's mature and that one island is more mature than another island. But the thing is, Ken Ham and most young earth creationists are going to come back to them and say, that's not good enough. You really can't believe that. They're going to quickly point out that the Hawaiian islands that were formed if the Hawaiian Islands had been formed on the second day of creation, then those islands would have had to have endured what? The Noahic Flood. And yet, there's no evidence. Or in this, in this case, they're, they're accepting the evidence of secular science. They agree that there's no evidence that these islands have ever been covered with water. All right? They haven't been covered with water. So if they've been created on the second day, they should have been around at Noah's Flood, and therefore they should have been covered with water been eroded somewhat, but something should have been left behind, right? Some sediments that are not just volcanic sediments should have been left on the Hawaiian Islands. So not wanting to appeal to miraculous preservation of the islands in their present form, God just miraculously prevented them from incurring any damage by the flood. Young Earth creationists generally just deny special creation of the Hawaiian Islands and really virtually all other recognizable geological features on Earth. Instead, they insist the Hawaiian Islands were formed after a global flood and thence and thus they're not even as old as the earth they're only four thousand years old because they formed after the flood this is in complete contradiction with numerous sources of evidence and necessitates the young earth creationist anti-intellectual responses to the scientific community's results and findings look ken ham and other young earth leaders they leave the lay christian who recognizes that there is evidence that the Hawaiian Islands and other geological features on the earth in a very difficult position. Clearly, if they are formed less than 4,000 years ago, then they cannot appear to have been created with a mature, in a mature way. Ken Ham has presented Christians with a stark choice. It's either millions of years and no apparent age, or it's literally a young world that cannot appear old, but must be interpreted in every way as appearing young. They cannot appeal to an apparent age. Appeals to the concept of creation with apparent age, they don't seem to satisfy anybody. Young earth creationists acknowledge its limitations, while old earth creationists see no reason to invoke apparent age, except in cases of specific miraculous inventions by God, interventions by God, such as turning water into wine. Despite these views, my experience shows that a significant number of Christians resort to the idea of apparent age to sidestep difficult decisions regarding the question of origins. Many acknowledge the issue with 
young earth creationism, but are not prepared to consider the implications of an old earth for their faith. Thus, they opt for a simpler solution of a parent age. They feel like it's this magic bullet, right? It's this get out of jail free card I mentioned before. Like I can like walk the line. I can say like, I agree with the evidence that the earth looks old. God simply made it look old. Anyone engaged in grassroots efforts to assist people in exploring questions of origins is going to recognize that addressing the issue of apparent age is a necessary step before any meaningful progress can be achieved in encouraging individuals to confront their views of origins in any significant manner. This is just an introduction to the topic of a mature creation. And I labeled this a false hope of mature creation. It's a false hope because it doesn't really make anybody happy once they really start to think about it, once they start to think about the implications. But as it suggested, I run into this all the time. Facebook, Twitter, other places, comment section on YouTube. Many, many Christians simply want to just appeal to, oh, God created it that way. He created it with the appearance of age. And I'm seeing more and more and more pastors who do this too. It feels like something that they can say without having to back up. I'm going to look at the Huaylans in, in much more detail in a second video. And then we're going to actually look at several different Facebook threads and look at popular responses, popular people's, um, we're going to look at popular reactions to the parent age. I'm going to show you pastors who have appealed to a parent age and how they have tried to defend it. And then we'll take another look at a couple examples, specific examples of reading the historical record from the surface of Mars. And we'll ask these questions again about, did God make it that way? Or is there a process that produces the features we see on Mars? All right, I'll be back with more on a false hope of a mature creation. Till then, blessings to all of you. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.